So as I mentioned, my name is Ryan Knight, one of the co-founders of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, but also a partner with Empowered for X, which is thanks to their sponsorship and their partnership, we're able to bring you these grant info sessions so that you can learn tips that I use to write grants and also tap into the opportunities that are available. And do let me know if it's like laggy or not coming in smooth. I might have to reboot my computer, but let me know if it gets bad. All right. So uh, a little bit about myself. I do consider myself a serial social entrepreneur. So I run a couple of social enterprises, namely Detailing Nights, which is a mobile waterless car cleaning company. So we go to people's houses or their offices, clean their cars on the spot without using water and our plant-based eco-friendly cleaning supplies. I also run Service Kingdom, which is a consultancy firm that supports social enterprises, I'm part of Executives Power Up, which helps business owners uh, fill out their executive team, so their C-level team, so that they can uh, attract capital and grow their companies. And also working on a secret project called Black Panther's Cage, so you're getting the inside scoop but Black Panther's Cage, think of Dragon's Den, but with Black founders and Black panels and Black investors. So if you're looking to invest, definitely stay tuned for that. Or And if you're looking to pitch to investors, stay tuned for that. But as I mentioned, I'm the co-founder of ACBN. We really started because we, there was a gap in, as a business owner, the supports needed to grow my business. So we started ACBN, but I'll go a bit deeper into that in a sec. So really quick, do love to shout out the partners and our valued uh, collaborators. So Calabash, that is a cooperative of expert service providers in the Black community. So if you do need uh, services, whether it's accounting, consulting, uh, impact measurement, definitely check out calabash.global. And they have a directory of expert service providers from our community. Alterna Savings has been a great partner for us. Uh, supporting us with developing our microloan program and also just supporting entrepreneurs in general with uh, getting access to funding. SETSI, which stands for the Social Economy Through Social Inclusion, and also Zush Services Enterprise that helps with our business advisory. So Sheridan Edge, they're uh, one of our partners as well. So if you do need support, they offer free uh, services for business owners. So they're at the, oh my gosh, the Mississauga campus. So if you're nearby, definitely check out their website so that you can get additional uh, supports for your business. Dream Legacy Foundation, more so focused on tech founders. So if you are a Black tech founder, they have relationship with the DMZ at Ryerson to help, uh, uh, they help uh, validate your idea and then create an MVP and then launch it so that you can get investment. So if you're a tech founder, definitely touch base. They call it the Black Innovation Fellowship. Uh, one Full Circle, which is very similar to ACBN, but based in Quebec. So if you're in Montreal, if you know somebody in Quebec and Montreal, make sure that they're connected to One Full Circle. And of course, the Toronto Community Benefits Network. A real big shout out to Rosemary Powell from there and their ongoing support of what I've been able to do with ACBN and even from before that with Detailing Nights as well. All right, let me switch over. So a bit of history on ACBN. We started about five years ago and it was really because of that gap I was seeing as an entrepreneur when I was ready to franchise a company and expand across Canada and go into the US. There weren't a lot of black focused business organizations to tap into to be able to that had the mandate to scale up companies. So we brought six entrepreneurs together, said, could we create this entity to sit down with an entrepreneur, figure out what stage they're in, and then help them create a strategy to grow their companies exponentially. And initially we started with, you know, info sessions, networking events, but we started to realize entrepreneurs weren't at a certain baseline to be able to take advantage of all the opportunities. So we shifted our focus to capacity building. So that capacity building allows us to now start our own microloan program so we can loan dollars to entrepreneurs up to 25,000 based on what they want to do with their business. 
also we support them with their marketing and sales and also get them investment ready. So if they're looking for angel investment or their pre-seed round, pre -seed round, we have an accelerator that supports them in that. All that to say, plug in so that we can support you and see which area of your business, like what stage you're in, and then we can connect you to the right supports. Over the past five years, we've been able to engage with over 5,000 Black entrepreneurs, we're seeing a large percentage are female entrepreneurs, but one thing that I'm most proud of is our ability to partner with other Black focused business organizations across Canada now. So there's over 40 and our reach is now extending to over 20,000 Black entrepreneurs. And really quickly, the pillars that we do stand on, of course, entrepreneurship, that is the greatest tool that I have found to create economic inclusion and empower the Black community. And so convening like this, whether it's virtual or in person at our first Friday events. So mark your calendar, March 3rd is our next first Friday event. Uh, in Brampton, we're gonna be in person and I believe in Toronto will be in person as well. But the reason we're here is that access to funding. So we really wanna lean into supporting entrepreneurs and organizational leaders in getting access to more additional funds. So I'd like to show this slide just to give you the range of the types of funding that we've been able to get because it differs from pitch competitions to uh, city grants, uh, provincial grants we've been able to get, even uh, federal grants and sponsorship from corporations. But you'll also see it ranges in size from like $500 all the way up to over a million dollars and almost everything in between. So just to show you the scope of the types of dollars that are flowing around us all the time and how we need to now position ourselves in front of that flow of money. And that's what I get the most joy out of is helping others also access this funding. For example, Rescue Youth International, they're a great nonprofit here in Brampton and working with youth in the education and justice system, but weren't getting all the grants that I believe that they deserve so we were able to work with them, identify the investment readiness program, help them design a social enterprise that would generate revenue that would be able to help the nonprofit. On the other side with Custodia, they're a for-profit company, but they operate as a social enterprise. So being able to support seniors to stay longer in their homes by taking care of, I'll say the outside chores, Custodia also was able to identify the investment readiness program, get a grant of up to a, up got a grant of 100,000 to amplify the work that they do in the community. And New Life Project, they're out in Ottawa, shout out to Brenda. Again, weren't getting the uh, grants that I would say that they deserve, even though they're doing such great work, we were able to work with them and they were successful getting the Supporting Black Communities Initiative. So today we're gonna quickly dive into two documents and then we're gonna get into what grants are currently active because these two documents is what allows you to write grants a lot faster. So you're getting the inside scoop because typically uh, you do have to be a paying member to work with our team and get your blueprint done. But because you're here, we're starting this year fresh, it's Black History Month, let's make sure that you have the tools that you need to be able to get the funding that you need. So the first document we're gonna open up is this grant writing blueprint. So let me grab the link and I'm gonna put it into the chat so you can follow along. Where is my chat? All right, so if you come into this document and you create a copy of it, you'll be able to follow along. And the reason that we create this uh, grant writing blueprint is because a lot of the grants that you're gonna find typically ask you the same questions. So you wanna be able to have this document so that you can map out your questions so, or the answers to these questions so that any grant that you're going for, you're gonna be further ahead because you don't have to always keep starting from scratch. So as you'll see, I mean, standard organizational information, you want to put your answers into this document. So make a copy first. So go up to 
file and then when you go to file it'll give you the option to create a copy and so you click here to make a copy and then you'd be able to edit your copied uh, version so as we're going through you'll see it's asking questions just about your organization or your business be sure to put those in but we'll just go quickly through and it's asking like when you're established your organizational address and so we're doing a lot of front loaded work so that you have it now set so any grant that you find you can just refer to this document and be able to uh, fill it in all right so pat i did see the question will you be providing a copy to us if you do click the link you'd be able to get the copy if the link is not working then definitely send us an email and we'll get you a copy of it all right so here we're talking about uh secondary and the primary and secondary contact people again just so you have this already ready to go uh your website social media channels email address put them into this document and now when it gets to organizational capacity this is where again asking how many employees do you currently have has there been any big important transformations but the big question would be describe how your organization has the experience and expertise to carry out the proposed project activities. So this is where you really want to brag about what you do and also make sure you don't only talk about the business that you're running and what you sell in your sales, talk about that community side of it, the community aspect, because some of the grants you're gonna look at some are focused on the business operations and others might be focused on the like community work so when we're looking at social enterprise grants similar to the investment readiness program that we talked about in previous sessions that grant you had to wear both hats where you have to explain how the business makes money and generates revenue but you also had to explain how does your what does your what community work do you do that has a positive impact on the um, community. So this is where in question 49 here, go as deep as you can, because if you get everything into the document explaining, hey, past successes, uh, your experience, then when you get to a grant that you're writing, depending on what size or how many words they allow, you can just edit it and put it in. So in your own document, don't be afraid to brag and really put in as much information as you can this area where it talks about project so those that are running nonprofits, it'll be easy for you to understand that hey this is what we do in the community and this is who we serve now if you're running a business typically again you're wearing both hats so you have the business that you operate but you also want to explain what is it that you're doing in the community that brings a positive aspect to it so that the project now becomes the work that you're doing in the community if it's a grant that's just uh, for supporting your business, for example, the digital Main Street grant that we're going to talk about later, it helps you with your online marketing. So you just have to ask answer questions about what are you going to do with this grant to improve your online marketing. But if it's a grant that you might be working with, let's say the Youth Opportunities Fund, and you're creating this entity that's going to do work in the community that supports youth, you're not just talking about the business that you run, you're talking about what you're able to do in the community to support um, the desired outcome. So you give it a title, again, your end, start and end dates. You can put approximates, but when you actually start to fill out the grant, you would put the exacts. And for the project description, this is where you'd want to go as deep as possible explaining what it is that you wanna deliver and why do you need the money. So again, there's two hats. If it's, you wanna explain what your business does and have that as a section. And then you also wanna explain what positive impact do you have in the community? And so depending on the type of grant you're going for, you would have both versions. One where it just explains, hey, this is what the business does. This is what our goals are. This is how we wanna grow it. And the other one explains, hey, this is how we support the community. We might be doing free workshops or we are partnered with a nonprofit. 
you'd want to explain it all in this project description here. So typically when we, uh, when, if you were to join one of our online courses like the Grand Hunter University, it's designed to help you complete this blueprint and the work plan and the budget. So again, if it's overloaded, if it's like feels like it's uh, confusing, we definitely have supports to help you get it done, but you have the template. So I always try to make sure you can do as much as possible on your own before things get expensive. But this template will walk you through. Uh, so talking about the expected results, this is a key uh, part of grants where they wanna see based on whoever you're trying to serve, how is what you're delivering going to improve their livelihood or improve their circumstances. So you wanna be able to explain how a person goes from their current state to a better future state. And you may hear terms such as theory of change or uh, impact measurement. So these are things that you wanna identify, how are people gonna improve based on the work that you're doing? And also what are those indicators that you can measure? So it's difficult to just say things in theory and then you're not able to actually measure it because they do want to see more impact measurement to make sure that you're being effective. And as we cycle through, and so when I talk about uh, the key activities that we're going to focus on in the other document. So for now, we're just kind of going high level. All right. And so this area where it talks about uh, partners, and just before I talk about partners, let me just quickly check Winsome. Would you say a business plan is needed for grants? No. So a business plan definitely helps you writing grants because a lot of the information about your business would be in your business plan. Grants go a bit further where it talks more to the community work that you're going to do. And so elements of your business plan will help. But you also want to talk about if there's specific projects that you do in the community that aren't part of the business operations, usually those are the questions that they're asking for in the grants. But still get the business plan done, that's a good point. So talking here about partnerships, so being able to collaborate and work like strategic partnerships with other organizations that have sim a similar mission to what you're trying to accomplish always helps to amplify your applications. And there's kind of two rules of thumb. So there's key partners that let's say you're a for-profit company, the grant is only open to nonprofits, you could partner with a nonprofit and then be able to have the nonprofit lead the grant and you both would uh, execute the grant. And also there's, I'd say strategic partnerships where they, you're writing a grant and you have community uh, organizations or community partners that you work with and they're more lending support to the grant that you're writing. So they wouldn't be a key partner, but they would be somebody that you'd be able to put down as a, like a community partner that you work with and they could provide uh, support letters. So this is where you should use this area to talk about all the different relationships and partnerships that you do have in the community, because then you'd be able to mention them in your grant. And you'll notice if you don't have a lot of partners, you definitely should go out and get some because that was one thing with Detailing Nights back when we started looking for grants because we're doing the car cleaning service, but we also had the youth entrepreneurship division to teach entrepreneurship to high school students and those that are out of school. But initially when we were writing those grants, we kept getting declined, even though I knew that the service or the, the program that we were running, it worked, we had run it for a few years, but when we were able to partner with a nonprofit organization that also had a similar mission of reducing youth unemployment and empowering them through entrepreneurship, we were more successful getting that first grant, which was the Youth Opportunities Fund. And a big piece too, is that when I used to write grants, I would write it as the whole business. So we're talking about all the cars that we're cleaning and the business, you know, the clients that we have, and we have this youth program, for certain grants, you actually want to pull out the community aspect of it and make that be its own thing. So we took that curriculum that we use to teach entrepreneurship 
and the mission that we had where we worked with youth and even those coming out of detention, that became its own grassroots initiative and we were able to apply for the Youth Opportunities Fund. So you want to get creative, especially when you're dealing with grants, because there are a lot more grants for uh, nonprofits than there are for for profits. So again, you can be creative. Jay asked, do you have a list of available grants right now? Yes, we do have a spreadsheet that we try to keep as up to date as possible. I'm not sure if Dable has access to it, but I'll try and pull it up and then I'll put it into the chat. So by the end of the presentation, remind me just in case I forget. All right. And so this is just talking about different accesses, uh, different sources of funding. And if there's in-kind contributors. All right. So I wanted to get to the cost categories. So this cost category, it prompts you on what types of expenses that you can think of you always want to be able to map out what does it take to actually execute your project. So that project that you're going to do in the community, you could use uh, this list to get an idea of things that you need to execute it. But when we get into the next document, which is the work plan and the budget, that's where you're going to uh, itemize all the things that you need, create that budget. And one thing that I see is, as a mistake is we go after Whatever the grant is, we go for the max amount, and then we try to reverse engineer what are we going to spend the money on. This blueprint helps you map out what is it that you need to be successful, and then you go find that money. Because a lot of times you might not need the max, and if you need more, you might have to stack on multiple grants. So it's good to do this work up front and then create your work plan, create your budget, and then you're more prepared to go after grants after that. All right, so it's talking about the budget. So I'm going to switch over to the other document. Just before I do, was there any questions about the blueprint that may have come up? I tried to answer the ones I saw in the chat, but if you do have an additional question, feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to switch gears. Okay. So the next section that we are talking about is the work plan and the budget. So as I mentioned, when I was going after the Youth Opportunities Fund, at first I was applying as detailing nights, detailing nights, and trying to explain what we do with our business and how we support youth. But what this grant wants to see is a new entity, a grassroots initiative that supports youth. Youth-led, it can be youth adult partnership, but typically it's youth-led. So this was the uh, template that I was able to create that now when this was successful, I used it as a template for any grants that I was going for and made sure and complete the work plan, complete the budget, and it made it a lot easier to go after future grants. And you saw the list of the grants that we've been successful with. All right, someone's asking, Winsome, can you do this blueprint with someone in person? That is possible. I would have to check with the team to see who is tasked with doing it in person. If you want it to be me, we'd have to work that out, but yes. All right, so in the chat, I did put in this link to the budget, uh, the budget and work plan template. So when you come in, make a copy of it. And I promise you this document will make grant writing at least 100 times easier if you do the work up front. And this is where if you do get overwhelmed, feel free to either join uh, the course where you can kind of go at your own pace and there's more videos that break down uh, like the budget on its own. It breaks down the work plan on its own. It breaks down the blueprint on its own. But if you're able to hey, sit down with your team, kind of go through each of the areas where you now have this done and ready and you understand what you need the grant for, you're going to be able to go after almost any grant with a lot less stress. So in this grant, you're really just identifying your major activities. It does give you a few prompts on what you could talk about, I think. Right, so you will have to think like, what is it that you need to do to deliver your grant? 
So for us, we turned the youth program at Detailing Nights into an initiative called Knighthood Academy. So to start it off, we had to develop the program, so design the curriculum. We had to do the outreach to actually bring in youth to join the program. We did the 12 weeks of um, training, so our leadership training. We then had them do like an event. So everyone would come together to do the event, bring in guest speakers. We did one-on-one -on -one sessions. So in between uh, the structured class sessions, there would be one-on-one -on -one time. And then like I was saying, the celebration event and evaluation. So doesn't have to be complicated. So for each milestone that will help you execute the deliverables of the grant, you would then think of how long will that take? Like when will it start? When will it end? Who are the resources that you need to get this done? So if it's a staff person, a volunteer person, and just describing the details. For each line item, you wanna be able to identify who's in charge of that, like what resource do you need to get it done? And also a bit of information about that milestone. And you do that for each one. Again, it's it's a lot of work up front, but in the long run, because anytime I see a grant, I do not sweat because I know I have the work plan and budget already done. It's more just to sometimes you have to navigate the different portals and the different ways that grant writers or grant funders want you to apply. But to explain your project and explain what you're going to execute, those things will already be done. And so on the work plan, you're talking about what activities you're doing and the timelines and the milestones that you want to hit. But in the actual budget, this is where you put a cost to what you a cost to what you want to deliver. So you do want to think of uh, the project expenses, the staffing. This template does give you a drop down. Oh, where is it? Oh, the drop down is the other one. But there's really only two types. It's either a project expense. Oh, I should turn this into a drop down. So yeah, it could be administrative, uh, capacity building, it could be staffing or honorariums, program development. And you'll remember in our blueprint, there was a few examples of different types of costs that you might incur. So as you think through, if you need any of these things, this is where you would put it as a line item in the budget template and then give it a description. If you can explain the cost, that works good. And then put the total cost in this column so that it'll give you the total cost at the bottom. Again, it'll be heavy lifting up front, but going line by line, your budget will be done. You will know how much money that you need. Then you can start looking at what grants are out there that either can uh, fund the whole thing or will you have to stack certain grants to execute this project properly? Worst thing is getting stuck. You get a certain amount of money, but then it's not enough to execute. And the grant, it becomes a lot more stressful because now you're coming out of pocket to deliver what you promised you're gonna deliver. So be sure, and again, I forgot to say, just use, create a copy of this. If you go to file and make a copy, you'll be able to use this as a template. As Winsom was asking, if you need support with getting this done, the blueprint or the work plan or the budget, please reach out to our team, uh, put the contact information. Actually, Dabo, if you can put the connect at empoweredforex.com link, just so if anybody wants to send an email right now, just before you forget, be sure to do that. But I'm gonna put our contact info at the end as well. And so just before I shift to uh, talking about what grants are currently available, was there any questions about the templates that I shared? I do see I have a registered business and an organization along with two other women, which is, an, which is not for profit that supports women entrepreneurs would like to get grant books grant help to hold more workshop events? How do I go about being successful in obtaining a grant? So that really comes down to the grant research. So depending on 
how you structure the organization, if it's a nonprofit, what is the mandate of the nonprofit, then looking at what grants are out there that match those mandates. So if it's women focused and you're, for example, doing empowerment, the Women's Entrepreneurship Fund might be a place to look at the grants that they were given out. If it's more mental health focused, you'd have to look at what grants are out there that support that specific mission. But yeah, that's where the research on what's out there comes into play matched with how you've structured it because let's say you're a new nonprofit you might not be eligible for the Ontario Trillium Foundation but if you've been operating for a few years that would be a, a good place to look at all right so I'll go to the next slide just to talk about some of the grants that currently exist one that I'll touch on really quickly is summer company I do find a lot of our youth miss out on this grant. It is a way to get $3,000 as a grant to run a summer company. So in the summer, you're able to uh, decide on a business that you wanna operate in between schools. So if you're in high school or college or university up to 29 years old, you'd be able to apply for this $3,000. So if you know somebody in that position that could benefit from this, please do share it with them. All they have to do is go visit their local entrepreneur center. So I know Brampton has Beck, the Brampton Entrepreneur Center, and ask them when, they, when are they accepting applications for a summer company so that we don't miss it. The other one that I wanted to touch on is the Black Opportunity Fund, as they created a program with CIBC and the Black Chamber, the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce. And if I scroll down, you'll see it's at, so it started as um, a loan program through CIBC where you're able to get up to $250,000 as a loan for your business. But because if you're not fully prepared to go after the loan or maybe you want to finish the business plan, they have partnered with the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce so that you can work on whether it's financial literacy, uh, creating a business plan, creating financial projections or improving your credit score. And as you go through any of these uh, programs, you'd be able to, you'd be eligible for their grant of up to $2,000. One thing that I did notice, if you're initially to apply for the grant, you had to go through the CIBC portal. So fill out their, uh, what is it? Well, I'll show you, hold on. I don't want, I know my computer is going slow, so I didn't wanna muck it up but CIBC has their platform that you would do the loan application depending if you wanted to get working capital or dollars for the grant or working capital for equipment sorry equipment and leasehold improvements or working capital but when you go to apply just to show you here it'll ask you about uh, your business plan and your financial statements. So in this area, if you were to say that you don't have your financial statements or you don't have your business plan, it would then connect you with the Black Opportunity Fund so that you'd be able to go after the grant and go through the programs. There is a way to skip this all. So if you go back to Actually, let's see. If we go back to the Black Opportunity Fund landing page, and I'll put this link into the chat as well so that you have it. All right. And then if you scroll down, you'll see there's a link to elevateblackbusiness.ca. So this link, instead of having to go through, oh, did I move that? Oh, here we go go through CIBC's portal, you can actually go directly to this website and you can sign up for the supports that the Black, the, the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce has and then let them know which area that you need to support with and you'd be able to get access to the grant program directly. They do structure it that they're expecting that you may want to get additional capital in the future. And let's see. 
you mentioned BOF grant and CIBC 2000 loan. Is it a grant also or micro loan? So the $2,000 is a grant that you would get by going through uh, the Chamber of Commerce's programs. So that is a grant. The $250,000 program, that's a loan. If you wanted to get a loan through CIBC, that would be a loan component. All right. So another grant that I'm a fan of is the BBPA Bates program. So a lot of times we need funding to be able to execute things for the business. So what the BBPA did is create BAIDs and they would partner you with uh, expert service provider to be able to deliver certain services. So before there used to be a bit of a longer list, now it is focused on three, which is accounting and bookkeeping, uh, business planning and cash flow projections and legal services. So if you need help with any of those three items, you come here to apply and I'll put this link in the chat as well. And again, so that way you don't have to come out of pocket to just uh, pay for these services. The BBPA Bates program would connect you with the service provider. The service provider invoices the BBPA and the BBPA pays them so that you can save that money and your grant money you can use on other things. All right, so Digital Main Street, this is a grant program that they have a few components. One that I really like is their Shop Here program. So if you are looking to do or to build an e-commerce store or if you already have a website and you wanna add e-commerce to it, when you come to this site, you can check out, let me see, Ontario and then the shop here program. So when you sign up, they actually pair you with, I don't think they're students, but they might be students, but a person that is the expert on building e-commerce stores. The application is really straightforward. They reach out to you and you really just tell them your vision and they build out the e-commerce store for you. It could be on Shopify, it could be on Square, uh, there's other e-commerce platforms as well. So if you want to get help with your online store, this is a great, and it's at no cost. The other program that they do have is the RAISE program, which stands for the Racialized and Indigenous Support for Entrepreneurs. You can get up to $10,000 to support the marketing and the digital transformation of your business. One thing I did notice is that it had their cohorts open last year from like June to December, then there was a waiting period where people were put on a waiting list. I was told it was supposed to open back this year in February, but when I logged in, so I'm logged in right now, but I don't see the link to sign up. So if you've already signed up before, reach out to the email that you got as confirmation to say, checking in. I heard that the digital main street is back open. Wanted to see if I'm still in the queue. And Jay, yeah, so I'm hearing from Parkdale that it's supposed to be open now. A few people that had applied before are getting called back. So just this website, it isn't showing that you can sign up, but I do know there's activity. So I'm gonna dig a bit deeper to see what's up with this and how to actually get a hold of somebody. I do see a question, are these loan and grant programs specific to Canada only? The ones that I'm sharing are is specific to Canada. We do have a, the ability to research for US grants as well. So if we did need support with that, send an email to the connect at empoweredforex.com email address. And we can see if we can support you depending on which state or which country that you're in. So yeah, Digital Main Street. I've seen, so it's a great grant. I'm just hoping that it's open back so that people can actually access it. The last one that they have is the Canada Digital Adoption Program. It has interesting criteria because with the RAISE program, you can get 10,000 and you can be a solo entrepreneur. With the Canada Digital Adoption Program, it's 2,400, but you have to have a payroll account and employees. So the 2,400 can help you with the support of online marketing and adopting e-commerce support but you, 
there is that caveat that you do have to have a payroll account number. Right. So a couple grants that unfortunately aren't open at the moment, but when they were open and we're hoping that it gets renewed, we definitely do a lot of info sessions about it and make sure that people get their grants in is the investment readiness program and the Toronto Enterprise Fund. So both of those grants do support social enterprises. So social enterprise is the sweet spot in between nonprofits and for profits, where if you're a nonprofit and you create a revenue generating activity, they're operating a social enterprise. If you're a for profit and you have uh, activities that are positively impacting the community, you would be operating a social enterprise. So now the government has created more funding for these types of businesses and the investment readiness program, you're able to get up to $75,000 as a grant and the Toronto Enterprise Fund, they have two components. So the first component is up to $10,000 to help you do your feasibility study and a business plan. And what they focus on is employment social enterprises. So if you're hiring from a segment of the population that finds it difficult to obtain employment, but you're able to hire them, you'd be running an, an employment social enterprise. And so that first component, you can get $10,000 to do your feasibility study and your business plan. The second component would be their $100,000 grant that helps you uh, launch the social enterprise and grow it. And that 100,000 is over three years. All right, question, is there an organization that teaches you how to add yourself on payroll? Yes, there is. I would reach out to the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce and know that they have a program around that. ACBN, we haven't added that specific, but if you just send us a note and ask the question, even in Powered for X, we can point you to somebody that can support you with that. So if you're a sole proprietor, you're unable to put yourself on payroll. If you're incorporated, you can put yourself on payroll from what I understand, but definitely go talk to an accountant. But that's what I was told when I was running my business. All right, is IRP still open? Unfortunately, no. Uh, they did have the last grant that was for charities, but right now, even that one's closed. So. We're waiting to see if it does get reopened and the, those that applied before they're waiting to see if they get approved. And the Trillium Foundation and the Ontario Grant Portal, these are specific to nonprofits. So this is where if you're a for profit company, you definitely want to create allegiances and alliances with nonprofits because they can lead these grants and you can be a part of the budget that executes on the project. So if you don't have a nonprofit partner, definitely start to look at who has similar missions and start to forge those relationships. So I do like to touch on the loans that are out there. Again, if you are looking for grants, the timelines are very difficult to operate businesses with. Usually you're waiting three to six months from the time you do the application to funds actually get into your bank account. But loans typically have a shorter time frame, and I'm a fan of being able to get loans that help you build your business, because if you can get money today and be able to increase your revenue, that increased revenue should cover the loan payments. So just uh, food for thought, as I mentioned, ACBN, we do have our micro loan, so you're able to get up to 25000 and there's various other organizations that also do uh, loan programs. So as I wrap, uh, wrap up, to really let you know that we do wanna see you win. That's why we do these info sessions because when I was running Detail Ignites and starting ACBN, there wasn't a lot of note sharing, I would say, between people that were successful with grants and those that wanted to learn. So I'm hoping that this session brings value to you. The templates help you get more comfortable with writing grants. And if you do need additional support, like I mentioned, we're here to really work alongside you. I'm excited to work with you. I will put my calendar link into the chat. So if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one session, we can start with that, uh, that conversation. And then if you do know that 
listen, this, writing grants and researching and all this is just too much. Reach out to our team here at Empowered Forex. Send us an email at connect. Okay. The email is connect at empoweredforex.com. Debo, if you can put that into the chat again. But beyond that, stay tuned for next week. We're going to do a deeper dive into one of the grants. Oh my gosh, what's it called now? Let me pull it up. I was just researching it. Yes, the Community Services Recovery Fund. So this grant, uh, 400 million pool of dollars that supports, again, nonprofits. That's why we need to create these uh, alliances with nonprofits. And that will be a working group. So there is a cost for that. It should be around $37. We spend two hours going through the portal and every question. So if you are interested in that grant, join us then. There's two times. There'll be a time at one o'clock and then there'll be a time at six o'clock. Beyond that, we're also gonna do a deep dive into the Youth Opportunities Fund, which is one of my favorite grants. It is difficult to get. So this is where I try to prep people with these templates and these work plans so that when it opens back and the expression of interest is due soon, you can now work alongside us. We're gonna spend an entire week going day by day, section by section. So by the end of that week, your application for the Youth Opportunities Fund will be complete and as close to submission as possible, but stay tuned for that. That's gonna be the week of March the 6th. So we'll send out information on how to sign up for that, that boot camp. Oh, and I think I have it here. Did I click on it? Yes. So, well, today is the grant info session. So thank you for joining. Uh, next week, February 15th, we're going to have the working group. So we're going to work on that community services revitalization fund. And if you wanted to book a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I can copy this, I think, to put this into the chat. And I would be happy to have a conversation with you, learn about what you're up to, and how we can support you in getting additional grants. So I'll pause there and just to give a pulse check to see if there's any questions. Feel free to unmute. Yes, in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, where should we start here? So good to know, I think I was there. How do you become a nonprofit organization? So nonprofit registration is similar to incorporating a for-profit company. The difference is you do have to have at least three board members and you yearly have to do like an annual general meeting. So there's some more governance around being a nonprofit, but it's a similar process to incorporating a for-profit. That's it. The IRP is still open until February 9th for Quebec province with the so-called Chantier de l'Economie Sociale. All right. Uh, the federal grant called IRP Investment Readiness Program. Yes. All right. Does the ACBN have an entrepreneurship contest, not pitch competition like other nonprofits? If not, what are we waiting for the Black community? So entrepreneurship contest, no, we don't have a contest. So, hey, send me an email and let me know. We do grants contests. So sometimes we give out 500 or $1,000, but we don't have entrepreneurship contests. All right. Was there any additional questions? Oh, if you're talking, you're muted. All right, good, good. So my question for you is, what was something that you were hoping to get today that I did not deliver? Was there a piece of information that you're hoping to get today that I may have missed? Because I wanna make sure that these sessions are of value. So you can either unmute yourself or you can put it into the chat. I do see a question, what's the cost of a one-on-one -on -one session? So just the initial one-on-one uh, -on -one clarity funding meeting, that is $25.
So if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one to talk about uh, your specific situation and what grants are available to you, then it's $25 for that. If you wanted somebody to write your grants for you, that starts at about $2,000, depending how complex the grant is. And our Grant Hunter University, that is $297. So if you want all the videos that talk about each section of the grant blueprint that I went through and the templates, that would be 297 and you go at your own pace. All right, I would love a copy of grants with links and deadlines. Have you ever considered creating one? So that is something that we created, but I will admit, haven't kept it fully up to date. I if I can find this thing. Now. I will try and find this for you so I can put it into the chats. Or Dable, do you have access to that funding spreadsheet to put into the chat? Funding options. Okay, here we go. You got it? Okay. Yeah, I was able to find it. So this spreadsheet, we do have to update it with some of the upcoming grants, like one that is, is coming out in April, uh, the FACE Coalition in partnership with TD Bank, they are creating a $5,000 grant as well, but the applications are not open yet. So when they do open, we will let you know. Yeah, so this was the um, the one that we created. Oh, it didn't disappear. All right, sweet, sweet. So we're at two. Again, thank you so much. If you do want to have that one-on-one -on -one session, feel free to book it in my calendar. Otherwise, hopefully we'll see you next week if you're interested in that community services revitalization fund. And if you're interested in the Youth Opportunities Fund, we're going to do the deep dive in March. So mark your calendars, March 6th. We're going to get to work and make sure we get that expression of interest in. But have a great rest of the afternoon, everyone, and happy grant hunting. We'll talk to you soon.